That's the one I wanted. Yeah. If I fall backwards, you know you're not going to be able to stop me, right? <laughs> I'll catch you. This is another short how-to video with Jack Davis from Epic Yard Farm in Phoenix, Arizona. She is going to teach us how to air layer a fig tree because I am probably going to be moving and I don't want to leave my fig trees behind. So this is the best way to take a piece of my tree with me. Now this is the first time she's tried it. She's been taught how to do it. So we're both going to get our feet wet right now, air layering a fig tree. We've selected this branch uh, on the Desert King fig because it's nice and straight here and it's already tied up but it was going to be in the way of the walkway. Uh, you pretty much want to select anything that you think you'll be pruning anyways because you'll have to remove the whole limb later on when you are done with the air layering. Because once it develops roots, we'll have to take off the whole branch anyways. First, I'll remove the leaves around the areas that we are going to air layer to clear our work area. And then I'm just selecting a spot where I'll score the skin about one inch apart, the top and bottom. Score straight down. And that's where we'll wrap the soil around and eventually it will send roots out here. Great. And then this is where we'll cut off once it's rooted. The first thing you do is take a plastic bag. I'm using a plastic bag to form a funnel shape to hold the soil. And you want to tie the bottom of the plastic so soil doesn't fall out. We have pre-wetted the soil. Not soaking wet, but just moist enough. So when the root comes out, it has a medium to grow into. And tie the top of the plastic bag so this will hold together. And next, you can take your pruner, poke some holes for breathing. You want to take a foil, cover it so it protects it from the sun. We're doing an experiment with this. Um, we're not, we choose not to use rooting hormone on this, but for the brown turkey fig, we'll put rooting hormone on the wound that we created to compare later on to see how, which one has better result. We'll check back for the result in two months and for now this is done. We're applying rooting hormone on this brown turkey fig branch where we cut the skin off. And we're going to compare the results uh, in two months. The bag holds in the moisture. Yes. And it kind of sweats and that's all the moisture it needs the whole time? Yes. You never have to water it. No, you, you don't water it. So that's why it's important to pre-moist pre the soil medium that you're using. You want to make sure you tighten the bag and the soil around the opening that we created to have good contact uh, when, the, when the roots start to grow in this air layer. Well, it's called air layering, but there's really no extra air in there. It's just soil and a bare stem, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
but because you didn't remove it from the tree it's not a dead branch that you're trying to root it's a it's alive so the mother plant is actually still providing uh, life to to this uh, branch that you're trying to root but the first thing you did was trim off any figs at the end yes and leaves that are in the way yes that okay. way it can put more energy into rooting instead of ripening the fruit and now you're poking some holes just a few holes just a few holes just so it doesn't go stagnant in there and then it doesn't affect the figs that are below that section no it won't The way we select the branch for air layering is to avoid the ones that is already dry and very aged. This looks like a three to four year old branch. You can see how brittle and dry it is. It's less likely to root compared to the ones that is a little younger, maybe one to two year old branch that is more brown, has a little bit of green underneath. But you want enough plant material so you can have the root ball cut it when it's rooted and still have growth going on at the top. Like a mini tree. Yes. You want that. A little yeah. bonsai basically. Okay. Great. Well, it looks like you found that. And we're done. Okay. We are getting ready for Jack and Jeremy to hit the road, but I'm giving her a few things from the late bloomer garden to take home for Epic Yard Farm 2.0. She's got sugar cane, which is the same sugar cane that she originally gave to me. I grew and now it's going back to her new farm. She's got a few passion fruit, some, some seeds. seeds. She dug up some of the cardamom, which is also a great house plant. So if it's too hot to be outside, she can put it inside. These multiply so she can make many plants with these strawberries. And guess what? I am sending my papaya tree. Remember when I first bought the papaya, when I came back from November, I planted in the garden and it didn't thrive and we took it out and I was gonna return it and I never did. I left it in this pot and it started growing. Look how beautiful they are now. So she's gonna take this. This will be very, very happy and huge in Epic the Yard Epic too. Yard Farm 2.0. Sweet Annie and a tomato plant that was given to me as well as a birdhouse and the apricot tree that I salvaged from my neighbors across the road. So she will be able to remember the late bloomer garden every time she looks out the window and the dragon fruit. Oh, and uh, some sweet potato slips. So she's gonna be growing some sweet potatoes too. So I hope you enjoyed this series with Jack. Please uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, tune in and look at all my Phoenix videos and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video. No, no, no. This one? Yep, that. The one with your scissors hands? Okay. This hand? Yeah, the right yeah. one. I know. I know which one's right.